looking at Stefan's hair. <laughs> and he was thinking, I want that hair. Yeah. I remember we finished this one scene. It's actually on a blooper reel, I think. Joseph Morgan cracked me up. We shot this scene. It's like three o'clock in the morning. I think I just like ripped somebody's heart out or something. It was at the Mystic Grill outside. This whole crazy big action sequence here has just happened and the cameras, we haven't cut, everything finishes. Everyone's like, cut, cut, cut. Joseph Morgan just goes, this shit just got real. <laughs> Did you know that yes. so this whole funny. thing is supposed to be a Q&A? <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what's up? Hey, We've been question. talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> you have 10 minutes to ask us questions. Go. sorry guys. Nice to see you again, by the How way. How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, congratulations on new baby girl. Thank you. Yeah, the question is, what's the craziest thing you guys ever done? In life? <laughs> In, like, behind the scene. Behind Ian? <laughs> Craziest thing? What's the craziest thing you've done behind the scenes? Well, Paul and I have done a lot of things together in the last nine years of our lives. A lot of them uh, you cannot say in public. Um, just for respect for the public, a lot of them have been illegal. Um, and some of them, the studio and the network would just never talk to us again. So... Um, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Better yet, Sorry. get off the stage. <laughs> I'll get off the stage. Um, Shit, I don't know. That's one of those questions. It's like it's such a loaded question because if I say something, sorry, I got a bum lag, guys. I gotta stand. I if I say something, it's not, now everyone can see you, Paul. If I say something, it's not fun. Paul looks good no matter what. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, um, we've done some crazy stuff. I mean, it's like one of those things. things. We got some things. It's really just an inappropriate question for the group. Yeah. Next question. I would say, here's what I would say. I would say you can rest assured that we have laughed so hard and did things, done things together and at each other that will literally make you cough, like coffee through your nose, um, which I've done on set before. And it burns, it's super acidic, FYI. Um, but later, if you have another question for us. The whole crew wore shirts of Ian Summerholder naked. Oh that was pretty good. God. Did you know about that? Ian was doing a scene in a bathtub. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. I was chained. Remember when, when Uncle Mason chained Damon to the thing and he was like, shoving that... Is that a different film that you did with Uncle Mason? The, 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 no. It was a photo shoot bonus with a really famous photographer from when I was like um, 18 what? years old or 17 years old. Super inappropriate age. Yeah. And there's like this naked oh, picture wow. of me. And someone found one. And... <laughs> My question's for Ball. That is the most amazing comedic timing of all time. <laughs> I could not have written it better myself. It's because she's tired of me. I have a lot of questions for Paul. That was, that was great. That was pretty good. Um, yes. How what are I? your next projects after the play that you just completed? Oh, thanks for asking. I actually have no idea. Um, really. I just finished my play last night. Woo! Uh, thanks. Woo! Um, and I really genuinely have no idea what I'm doing next. I wish I could give you some amazing answer, like I'm shooting a Spielberg movie, but I don't really know. Um, I... You might be shooting a Spielberg home movie. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I really don't know. I, I was um, gonna go direct something in Toronto, and I couldn't do it because I had to do the play. Um, well, I chose to do the play. Um, and uh, I think I'm gonna direct another episode of TV. There's been a few things, but um, hopefully I'll be gracing your TV screens sometime in the near decade. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to it. Thank you very much. Good to see you, love. <laughs>
No, it was a totally it's normal like, response. It's just like, I'm tired of talking to you and you're way No, I can't because I have my leg. I have a bum ass left leg. It's crushing me. Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm, okay, I feel like I'm too short for this. There we go. Um, in season eight, when Damon says applesauce penguin brother, is there a story behind that? And did you think it was as funny as I thought it was? <laughs> what? Can you remind me? Because I remember you saying that, but what was the context? It's actually really funny. Um, that was a pure writer's room thing, where it's when Damon is compelled her name, by the naked chick in the blood pool. Sybil. 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 Been a while, guys. Not Sybil Shepherd. She was awesome. Um, and I was supposed to repeat. I'm not. I'm compelled to not say anything about what's happening. So when Damon was, wasn't it? I mean, when Stefan was asking me what to say, I knew the answer, but all that could come out of my mouth is applesauce penguin. So I laughed my ass off when I saw that. It was hilarious. I was also kind of drunk when I read that script. I was like, yeah! <laughs> So you would say, Damon, what are you doing? <laughs> Applesauce penguin, brother. It's actually. Damon, what are you doing? <laughs> Applesauce penguin, brother. <laughs> what do you call it? The windstorm? Or sandstorm. Sandstorm. That's, what Paul, that's how Paul describes my acting. Yeah, just always in a sandstorm. <laughs> 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 a little bit gets in his mouth, too. <laughs> that is some funny shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nervous that you you do that whenever you um, start getting a little frustrated. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You do that. You go. <coughs> <coughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. That's what it is. <coughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> when Paul's pissed off about something, he can't get something right, or like a scene's not working, or people are talking in the back, or something. He's like, <coughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> I can't tell you. Well, this one and I obviously we work together every day years of our lives and we love each other like brothers but also too it's also very fun when he's directing or I'm directing because we literally don't have to say a word to each other we just know we're like yeah 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 I get it I get it, I get it. but when you're cutting Paul I'm sure there are things when you're cutting me in between takes we do the same shit <laughs> after every reset on the, whenever you're cutting Paul on the daily is like <coughs> all right let's what all right here we go here we go Assembled over eight years, all of the shit that I said in between takes, it would be, it would be like career ruining. <laughs> yeah. And also, it, we could do it like the. Have you ever? Have you ever just put on Google or YouTube the Trump China video? And it's all the times in the campaign that Trump said China, 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 China. China. And it's by the way, it's genius. Might be one of the only times you laugh. Uh, oh my God, that's a beautiful shepherd. You know, if you want, when it's hot in here, I always can sometimes just take my shepherd's vest off because it holds so much heat. Maybe sometimes. Thank you for the question. You're awesome. Did you have fun, or was that boring? No, I loved it. Okay, you don't feel nervous anymore. No, I'm actually totally chill now. Because I can spit for you. Right? You know, I have to say too, my sister and I, we just. Love the show, and we'll be in the house when well, we're yeah, together. Nikki would gladly hand me off to you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> she did hand me off to you, 16 hours a day for three years. Um, it's going to be cool and powerful, and we're going to work hard. That's what I need my character to look like, because he's a comic book character, and you look at him in this comic book, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've got six weeks to look like that. <laughs> uh, my question today, guys, is out of um, Sheila Bennett, so Grams, Sheriff Forbes, and Tyler Lockwood, you had to kill one, marry one, and kiss one. Who would you choose and why? 
Wait, hold on, which ones? Sheila. So you've got Sheila, you've got Grams, Tyler Lockwood, and Sheriff Forbes. Who would you choose? Kill one, marry one, or kiss one? <laughs> who's Sheila? Grams. Oh, Grams, and then Grams, who's the other? Yeah, yeah. Cat Grams, Grams. Yeah, okay. And then uh, Tyler Lockwood. The dude? Yeah, Tyler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Trevino. Who else? And then Sheriff Forbes. I would immediately kill Trevino. I wouldn't even think about it. <laughs> and then I would, um, I would marry, I would kiss Grams, and, and I'd marry Marguerite. Marguerite. Yeah. Marguerite's hot. And Marguerite's she hot, had, and she's she had awesome. Gun. She had a gun. Yeah. She could protect her. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, that's what I would do. Really, thanks very much, guys. Why? What, what would you, you do? What would I do? Oh, I couldn't possibly say. On screen and off screen. I work with an animal every day. <laughs> it's a Polish, Polish animal. <laughs> sausage. <laughs> Polish sausage animal. A wiener dog. Um, I gotta tell you, working with animals. Working with animals is brutal because yeah. you're in such. I, I, mean, I love. And, you're never gonna. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Wait. Well, two dudes who love animals. Yeah, we. I love animals. I, you know, love animals. The Humane Society, but. Working, with, Working animals. with animals is hard. It's hard. It's not as fun as it looks. And you also kind of feel bad for the animal. Yeah. So it's a double-edged sword because the animal never does the same thing twice, twice. and you have to match the medium, the wide, the whatever, and then... And the handler's trying to get them to do yeah. stuff, and you're like, oh, man. I shot an so entire bad. miniseries. Um, oh, with your wolves. Well, that, but then I also did this... I did yes. do that, but then I also did this other miniseries called Fallen with Brian Cranston, and I played, and I literally was talking to a movie? dog the entire time, <laughs> and the dog was talking back to me yeah. with the cheesiest voice. I'd be like, I'd be like, I can hear you, and he'd be like, Yeah, you can hear me. I'm your dog. And I was like, because when I, when I was shooting it, I was like, Oh, they're gonna make this dog a cool like. Like an AI. Do you remember Teddy yeah. would, would be like, hello, I'm Teddy. And it was so interesting, yeah. right? And the dog, and I was like, oh, I can't wait to hear what they did. And all of a sudden they like, <laughs> they, they played me the final product. And I was like, wait, I can hear you? Yeah, I'm your golden retriever. Ooh. And I was like, oh my God, this is the worst dog ever. My career is over. I was like, why did they hire this actor, this cheese ball to play this That's poor crazy. dog's voice? It's so bad. That's awesome. No, I know. I hated yeah, the voice. Yeah, it's hard. Um, I like the show. We. I just hated the voice of the dog. When we worked with our the horses, were the easiest. Um, the wolves, while they're amazing, I. As much as I love wolves, I just don't feel the need to see them in captivity. It makes me so sad. Um, and the crow. Remember the crow from season one. That crow, and you will never hear, you won't hear me say this about a lot of animals, was a dick. <laughs> I don't blame him, because I mean, he lived in a cage and he had to travel everywhere, but he was called a craven. He was half, there was a crossbreed. He was a cr crow and raven, and he was this tall. He was huge. The bird, he weighed like 14 pounds. And when he would spread his wings out, like couldn't get him through a door, because his wings were so wide, he couldn't actually get through a door. And if he bit you, he could break your finger in half because his beak is like that long. Man, this thing pecked me through my leather jacket, hit me a couple of times, hit the back of my neck once. It hit like, he hit like my, you know, but he was so sweet, but Damon, we were like, Damon eats him next episode. And he did. I ate the, I ate the, I remember I killed Uncle Zach and I ate the crow. I, ate, I had to eat him. He was a pain in the ass. And he cost us a lot of time. But I love animals. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, sweetie. Um, some scenes affect you differently, but... And that was only for Louisiana. I know, we're boring, guys. Nice to meet you. Uh, no, only once. It was in, they're like, public office, we're out of here. <laughs> I only thought about it once for a very short time. And that was only because of a very, very cool, very powerful group of people in Louisiana um, offered me uh, an ability to do it. But, and it needs to change. But it can't just be the revolutionary 
vote. Like, oh, I'm voting for Jill Stein because it's revolutionary, or Gary Johnson because it's revolutionary. Johnson. Johnson. But it needs to be done properly. It's not fair to us as people. But guess what? We're, and I hate to say this because I'm part of it as well. We're all so busy just doing our things. Being humans, we want the bigger house, the bigger car, we want the newer iPhone, we want to look at our Instagram and see what Sally's doing down the road. Oh, why is she so happy and I'm not? We're so buried in our own stuff that we never even look up to see what's really happening. And it's not until we wake up as a country will we ever change a thing. It's not going to happen. So I implore you and I beg you, it's something I'm trying to do as well, which is just put this thing down and start talking, you know? There's a reason for physical town halls like this. People would actually sit and talk to each other. Not behind a screen, not behind an alias, but together. And we may be different, but we can solve problems through compassion and compromise. And do you know who the Iroquois Indians were? The Native American tribe? So you know the term, you know the term seventh generation, like the whole food, like, like seventh generation, but you know the term seventh generation? Seventh generation comes from the Iroquois. And while there were different- Iroquois? Is, yeah, Iroquois. Okay, what else? In the US. They- Iroquois? Iroquois? Iroquois. But even if the different bands of the tribe and their differences, they would still come together and whenever they made a choice or a decision for the tribe, they would only make it if it benefited seven generations. Well, thanks. 
Well, what's what the mean? question? I don't know. We haven't gotten to one. You left. And I was trying to do it, but no one's helping me out here. What's your question? Oh, oh, oh shit! I thought it was there. I didn't see you. I thought you were the way you're standing. It's with the this, light. I literally thought you worked for the uh, events because you have this badge and it looks so official. And then I realize now that you're probably very young. How old are you? Thirteen. Right. So you yeah. I don't work. So anyway, hello. How may I help you? <laughs> okay, my question's for Paul. So you know how Elena lost her memories and then she came back and David was like, oh no. I feel like that's how I am after the show wrap. I lost my memories of the show. Um, and then I came back to the dimension. Um, it's hard for me to remember it. But, but continue. This makes no sense. So Oh, that sucks for my brother. Oh, well. <laughs> Wait. Two things here that don't make sense. My brother and this question. No, I know. All right, hold on. So Elena lost her memories and yep. then came back. Came back. Come, I came back. Yeah. And then what happened? Would you jump at the shot to get her back or would you just let your brother have her? Oh, like if she was like, oh, who are you? And yeah. then, uh, and then I'm like, oh no, you, you're with Ian? No, David. I wouldn't do that. David, David. I would say, no, you're, hello, my name is Stefan. Um, that guy is a, We used to make a nice. He has a, I would say, this guy's the In the Salvatore Manchester. He's, he's the neighborhood perv. You do look like the neighborhood pervert. Like, like like if I lived in your nice to meet you, and you were like walking the streets, I would have one hundred percent hold my children. Like, like I am. Uh, Look a, at this guy. I'm a proud, happy, very good father. So looking like that doesn't mean you can't look like the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you are the neighborhood. All right, sorry guys. I'm really <laughs> these lights. I, I yeah, can't. blame it on the lights. I only call Ian a perv when I can't see. <laughs> I'm flustered. Can someone help us out, please? Yeah, thank you. Does that make you feel Thanks for your question. That's very cute. Thank you. I love you. We, we, we love you too. Right back, bro. How do you feel, bud? Is that better? Better for your little better. eyes, your baby yeah. yeah. No! <laughs> well, I had that eye injury. Oh fuck, that's right. Yeah. Oh, now I feel bad. Actually, he really did have a legit eye injury. Now I feel kind of like a dick. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good, how are you? What's happening? Did you ask a question you earlier? Me, yes, I did. Wow, you got, you got two questions. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, no, two of the biggest wastes of your time in life. Can you guys hear us and see us back there? On the right side, I'm sure. What about on the left side? Nope. No? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Speak up, you idiot. Oh, thank you for coughing. So tell me. My question's quite silly, actually. One of my favorite books says, Never trust a man who can dance. Can either of you dance? Well, we all know Damon can dance. But we should probably see if Ian can. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know how well I can dance. Yeah. We've been in with you together. Yeah, we have. Ian and I have danced the <clears throat> way. Dance the way. There's a, there's a, there's a, a bar. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a music club, but I don't mean like, just like <laughs> but it's in a, in, it's, actually there was an old parking garage down at the bottom of this place in Atlanta and on one night of the, well a lot of the nights of the week it's jamming, but there's one night slap ass in the middle of the week, so it's like if you're prepared to have a really tough next day at work you go to this place and I was it 
like a Tuesday. I feel like we went there on the weekends too. Maybe, yeah, but I, it was always during the week and it was like pushing hard. Like, oh man. You'd see half the cast there, you're like, what time's your call, man? What time's your call? But if you had a late call, you know, a lot of times when we're shooting nights, we might not show up to set until 6 p.m., which means we're not on set until 7 p.m., which means we're not leaving until 6 or 7 a.m. So if you had that late call, you could push a little bit. And we would, we would dance our asses off. And it was dark, and no one cared or knew who we were. That's what I like about it. It's but so no dark. one cared, and it would be literally the, and further on, later on down the year, by season two, this was like a very, very well recognizable cast, like a group of people. And we used to just get hammered. And all of us, man, dancing our asses off, literally until three in the morning. And it was so fun. Um, Me and Ian Sherla's <laughs> Brian. <Dan. laughs> then there was another place in Atlanta that did Motown. And it was also in this basement. And it was also during the middle of the week. Yeah. Or it was on a Monday. Uh, it was in East Atlanta. Oh. And that was fun. Like, we actually had, for people that spent every frickin' day together, we also spent every night together. Like, we had our favorite wine bar that we literally just took over. Love that on one. On weekends. I miss um, that one. Me too, man. Literally until 4 or 5, even 6 in the morning. Um, we could just close this gate and the police never came in because they didn't have to bother. And we, and that was also too, I'm really thankful that it's not now because the amount of, when we were having a blast in 2010, no one was like with their iPhones like live Snapchatting. It was all about connection. It was all about people. So now when people experience anything, whether it's concert or it's a party, it's all about the personal digital media that you can create. And I'll never understand for the life of me why, you know, like the Rolling Stones now would never be the Rolling Stones. Um, I would like, I would, I would have the boys go off to Europe. I'm not kidding. Ooh, yeah. I just think it's important to. I think we were all stuck in this little town, and they started running out of ideas, you know, for budget reasons. For, you know, but I think the boys, like, imagine literally, the boys, we never went. Dude, imagine we went to Europe and like had a new community to 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 uh, trip. <laughs> I thought that was going to happen because we pitched that from day one. And I remember in our renegotiation. What about France? France has the most amazing tax incentives for filming. Can you imagine Damon Stephanie running around Paris, but in the new digital age, like, you know, texting, like, yeah, man, all the hot girls are in this club. Um, like, how cool would it be? But really, they have gone to Italy and, like, they're going for Italy and maybe tracing back their roots, but in Italy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But well, we could bro. never do that because it, was, it made so much more financial sense just to, to do this on sound stages in Atlanta. And sort of, you know, but, but you know, man, you know that um, Shadow Hunters, the show I directed, they are going, they are going to do an episode, I think, in Europe. I think. I don't need to hear this, Paul. I'm saying, like, <laughs> it's crazy. I'm going to do that on my next TV show. Didn't the Gossip Girl do that too? The Gossip Girl did it. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, lovely lady? Hi. Uh, my question is, in which moment of your life did you decide to become a director and producer? Where's your accent from? I'm just curious. I'm from Mexico. Oh, okay. I was trying to place it. Yeah. Uh, when did I? I, think I think we, yeah, think, no, I think we always wanted to do that. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think I always, you, when I was a kid, I think the first pilot I did, well, the second pilot I did, I was like 17, and I, remember, I convinced the showrunner to let me direct an episode if they got picked up. Really? Yeah, and like in season two, season three. I, he was like, okay, I mean, not like legally, but he was like, okay, I'll give it to you. And so I always had this like idea that I wanted to direct a TV series that I was 
goes on, it goes on for long enough. I just never had any on for long enough. And then the Vampire Diaries came out. Vampire. Paul's an amazing director. He's a shitty actor, but he's an amazing actor. <laughs> well, he, it's, it's, I made you look good in my episodes, so yeah, yeah I must know. Have. It's hard to make me look. Oh my god, that fucking that coffin scene with the flaming coffin. I know it wasn't your fault. What are you talking about? When Elena's burning, and I had to like <laughs> be upset for the eight thousand times she was burning. <laughs> And I was like, Paul, just whatever you do, man, don't be like here and like a 150 lens. He's like, don't worry, bro, I'll just stay wide. I'll stay wide, don't worry. And you did. You did. You see, not only did you stay wide, you stayed wide from like the side. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to come. That's right. But he was like, I got you, bro. I got you, bro. I just didn't want. <clears throat> It was just one of those days. Not, I'm just moving around because my leg is hurting. Not every day, like, especially when you're in like season seven of a show. And, I mean, how many times could either one of us say, Elena! <laughs> After a while, like, you, you literally, you're going to work that day and just going, I have to come up with a real legitimate reason to say this and mean it so that the audience is not going, you suck. Well, that's why, and that's why 22 episodes is hard. 22 episodes is hard. But there was a scene where someone hit, it was, was it seven? Season seven where they, we hit Elena's grave, or her casket, <clears throat> but it was always kind of there. Maybe it was six. Why, they're they're making me crane my neck. Why can't you just have a nice seat, man? <laughs> oh, true. My neck is killing me. But he basically, I had the, her 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 um, her um, coffin was on fire, and I had to run. And I just knew that there was going to be this like epic shot of the flames and me coming tight tight into focus. And that was just one of the rare moments. Where I was like, I can't fucking pull this off as an actor. Like I literally can't. And I try never to say that. But I can't. So, Paul, please, you're my brother, just stay wide. <laughs> I got you, I got you. All right, guys, we're going to widen out here, and we're going to shoot. That was good. Thank you. I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> I remember it. I mean, I do, but there, I are, there are very rare moments, but that's when you're, like, scared chillers and acting. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. I really don't. I just... I can't scream, no, Elena, one more time as an like an adult male and feel good about myself. <laughs> but it worked. Thank you very much. I thank love you. you and... We adore you and we thank you. And I came from Mexico only to see you, so my trip worth it. Okay. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. We're in Mexico. We're in Mexico. Torreón, Coahuila, near Monterrey. Yeah, it's beautiful there. <laughs> I just flew over Monterey yesterday. Really? Well, because I was flying from from. Uh, you went to well, Chile. I went, yeah, but I was flying from Panama. I went to Santiago, Panama City, and then Panama City. We had some weather, so we went around, kind of went closer to Monterey. Perfect. I was. You on should top. have said hi, bro. I did. What's up? <laughs> Hola, Monterey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mucho gusto. We'll always choose you. Oh, that was two stuff. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Who said it? Oh, that's so nice. I will always choose you. That's so sweet. Do you think she was lying? Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah, she lied a lot. She lied a lot. Yeah. Hey, that, that little girl's so smart. She put on her headphones. I think her mom did that. Her. <laughs> yeah. You heard us talking. I think your mom did that. She's the cutest thing, man. I love this guy. I, I love... Lo I just love that his jacket matches his eyes. <laughs> I love... The way he touches my knee. <laughs> I love that I've spent so much time around this man. And he just knows me through and through. And... And loves you anyway. We've never had a fight. Only when you try to sleep on my side of the bed. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa! 
I like the left side. Because it's warmer. <laughs> We've never had a fight. We had one argument once in a scene. Um, that's really it. I also love, because Paul is such a lunatic, he makes me feel so good about my own insanity. <laughs> I am a lunatic, I will admit. <laughs> that I actually feel like, oh. In, in, I'm so even during the photo ops, he's like, how's your, just, how's your brain? Just, <laughs> just don't go crazy, don't go crazy. <laughs> well, he's my little brother. I feel somewhat responsible for his well-being. You're insane too. I am. Yeah. I am. In a different way. Just ask my wife. I ask myself, okay. <laughs> I would say, well, I'm your wife. <laughs> my bro wife. My brother, but he's also my baby. <laughs> That's some crazy ass stuff, man. I'm from Louisiana, man. There's some. Hey, what's your favorite thing about me, dude? I just said, because I know you so well. Okay, okay, okay. And we, and we love each other, and we never. I love to love each other, point out. We've never had an argument. We just. We have this mutual respect for one another, and we just. Um, Although I don't think you argue with a lot of people in general, do you? I argue with a lot of people. Do you really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I argue with a lot of people. Are you Sagittarius? Uh-huh. Well, I was a Sagittarius. And then they freaking changed my birthday. You know, there's 13 astrological signs now. And then NASA realized this. That there were 13 signs. Well, what do you know? But they crammed it into 12 months. And so they got rid of this other sign. What's the sign? That just, I'm going to tell you, two seconds. Oh, you're arguing now. That just happens to be Sorry. when my birthday is. And the name is Ophiuchus. And Ophiuchus is the, the, the tamer, of the, the wrestler of the serpent. And a lot of Ophiuchus sounds... Do I want to wrestle my serpent? I, I don't know. <laughs> Serpent, not gummy worm. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of Ophiuchus that sounds like me, except this weird part of Ophiuchus talks about they're very jealous people, and I'm not like I get jealous. I don't get jealous at all. People actually make fun of me, or sometimes are annoyed by just the fact that I don't get jealous. So yeah, it's really annoying. Get more jealous, man. Well, sometimes when you date girls, oh, I'm very protective of my I wife. I see what you mean. Like, don't don't mess with my wife. Basically, I will like my. I, will. The, yeah, I see what you mean. Some, I see. What you mean. Yeah, girls always say like, could you just be maybe like a little more jealous? I like, no. You're trying okay, to I do that. Like, I just, the jealousy is just ruin the world. Um, but yeah, I love you. Thanks for your question. And when will, we, when will you get like another one? Well, first of all, I had a wonderful experience. There's such a nice cast, really. My friend Matt Hastings is the series director on there, and oh, I yeah. love him. And uh, I got very, very sick, actually, in terms of just had the flu in the middle of directing, which was not fun. But um, other than that, I really enjoyed it. The episode came out great, I think. They were very happy. And I was scheduled to direct an episode, actually, um, about four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. And I had a couple conflicts and I had to drop out, sadly. Um, so I will not be directing doing one play. this, yeah. And I will not be direct, well, yeah, but I was scheduled to direct it months and months ago. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, hopefully if they get another season, um, if they get another season, I'll, 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 I'll put myself out there. Hopefully they'll offer me another one. What if, what if, We directed an episode of Shadow Hunter. What if you and I were like the Duff Brothers? Together. But we're like the Fluffer Brothers. The Fluffer Brothers directing an episode of Shadow Hunters together. Oh man, that cast, they would kill us. That would be cool. Two Wampias directing a Wampias. That would be cool. Thank you. Thanks for your question. He's a damn good director. I mean, I prefer the Catherine character, she's more fun. Catherine character is more fun. But man, she was mean. That's good. 
I'm too excited to watch The Vampire Diaries. I had never seen it before. And I was like, okay, yeah. I was like, I'm, never, I, I'm not gonna watch, but you, you go ahead. And uh, I was like doing my thing, and then she put on the pilot, she put on the pilot, and I put it on. Oh, season, right. season one. And I, and, I, oh. and I started watching, and I was like, and I, all of a sudden I was like, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> and, I got, and I got super into the pilot, dude. Yes. And I forgot, I forgot, like, season one like, of this I, show. And I was like, oh shit. Was it shit. good? What's gonna happen next? Season of television. <laughs> and like, how the originals won an Emmy for like hair and stuff. We would have been nominated for Emmys for things like sets and wardrobe and it was just a different time where the studio and the network just, there's no way they would have submitted or backed any campaign for any of that stuff. Dude, I should have won an Emmy for hair. <laughs> Hero hair. Hero hair never wins. Tell me. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, so, as Elena, uh, how. Um, so, with that in mind, I Thank was you. curious what lessons you guys have learned from being a part of the show, whether it's like the show itself or things that you learned through the people you worked with and experiences that way. Well, you know, listening to what you just said, I've heard so many people say things like, uh, you know, I was sick, and the show helped me get by. There was one guy, I, had a year, father I was in Iraq. Father. There was one guy who said, you know, I was in Iraq for nine, nine years, and you, I watched you guys, you know? And there's all these, like, I constantly hear yeah. those things, and we forget that, you know? It's so amazing it's, to be reminded of how yeah. special that is. Yeah, I really forget that. So Entertainment much. is powerful, and it makes it all worth all of that time and energy, yeah. you know, is what I don't know if I do, you know? I know that I feel like there's a better suitor for Stephanie. I feel like um, you'd be better off with, um, oh, oh my god, I forgot his name, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> study on humanity, which is like why we are where we are in the world. We love people who are mean and like hurt people for some reason, I don't know. Wildly interesting thing, you know, it's crazy. Why, who do you ship Stefan with? Elena. <laughs> you know what, I'll tell you something. I just watched the pilot again and I ship them too. Yeah. Because they were, they, were, they were, like, man, they had a thing, you know what I mean? Well, what made that so important was that Stefan was this really kind, caring person who saw this woman, it's a very complex, when you think about it, who saw this woman that didn't just look like the love of his life, she literally was the love of his life. Can you imagine the, like, what that would do to your brain? It actually is it's it's, very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's a yeah. sad, their story is a very sad story because then his brother came in and Stefan turned, it, again, it's like, again, going back to season one, there was some really profound storytelling in this show and Stefan turning Damon, he didn't do it out of malice. He did it because he wanted to be with his brother and he was alone and he was scared. You know what I mean? And the sad, tr for me, The Vampire Diaries is really about the journey of these two brothers, but the Stefan Elena storyline is so special, and I don't believe that Damon, and I personally don't believe that Damon and Elena, I was always against them running off in the sunset together. Always, always, always. I thought it was total bullshit. To let, seriously, to let this guy, this man, who came in, 
and with complete malice and manipulation, destroyed my brother's life out of anger or something, and ruined this amazing relationship. I forgive you. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Naima Ropa. <laughs> Ropa. Oh. But, you know, season one of this show, man, was really profound. Storytelling was incredible. So, thank you. What up, girl? Hi, how are you? Well, I know which is your favorite Selena Gomez song. Which, but I'm a 40 year old man. I don't know a Selena Gomez. You gotta come up with it. She oh. said, which is your I mean, favorite? I know Selena. She's like a butt of me. She's just sweet. I've known her for years. So you know, yeah. we've done stuff together. But... So, so, yeah. so, 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 so wait, sh shut up, Paul. <laughs> wait, Selena or Selena? Selena, Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. <laughs> Tell me one more time. Which one is your favorite Estelina and Delina moment? Like for you? Stelina and Delina. <laughs> right? Sorry about my accent. No worries, your accent is perfect. My brother's an idiot. You guys just had Stelina, your Lena Gomez moments. <laughs> Stelina and Delina. That's what I was confused. I was like, damn, man. I don't know a Selena Gomez song. I'm gonna disappoint this girl. Stelena and Elena. Um, the, the pilot. Stelena and not Elena. Stelena, Stelena and Elena. Delena. Yeah. Um, my one of my favorite Stelena moments. <laughs> She's so awesome. Remember in the pilot when Elena walks up to her house. And she's like, to see her, uh, Aunt Jenna's there, and she goes to walk in the house, she's like, come on in. And Stefan looks out the door and he stops and he goes, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a great moment. What's up, kiddo? <laughs> because I, I just rewatched it. The way you saw the pilot. Yeah. Yeah. I love that moment. Yeah. I've, I've often sat and watched, um, Clips on YouTube of parts At of our four show. in the morning, crying. <laughs> no, when I was actually directing my episodes, because to objectively fall back in love with the show, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I, I didn't watch those scenes. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, Chris Wood and I have been texting nonstop lately. I'm not kidding. Have you seen Chris's Wood? I have. Well, not recently, but I have. Um, let me have a look here. Chris Wood um, and I texted. Oh, look at that. Yesterday at 7:15, I received a text. Oh, look at that. What picture? I said. Oh, did you see my Chris Wood picture? Face time. Face time. Harry Potter. Oh my God. Anyway, yeah, so they talk all the time. <clears throat> yeah, we talk all the time. Wow, look, I'm just looking through all our texts. Um, no, I mean, yeah, okay. Literally. <laughs> Hey man. Oh my god, how is she? Oh my god, how is she? Yeah! Yeah! It said, do you talk to Chris Wood? I said, do I ever? <laughs> There's a thousand people. Love you. Love you. Miss you. What? Say something, man. They can hear you. I miss you, baby. That's amazing. Are you on an airplane? Oh, you are? I'm going to wait to you, but I don't know. Alright, I will let you go. Later, brother. Bye. The beauty of technology. Oh, my mom. Oh, Rupert Stephan. Oh, my mom was bad. 
<laughs> Ripper Stefan, though, was one of my favorites. Ripper Stefan was just insane. Chris Wood. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Um, Ripper Stefan was really. Uh, he was. He was really good. Scared the hell out of me. What's the question? <laughs> well, if you quit flirting with Paul and with uh, Chris Wood. Question? It wasn't uh, for you, Doug. Oh, okay, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tell me, girl, what's up? I love you, Paul, so much. Oh, school. thanks. Oh, and Ian, sorry. <laughs> and Ian. And Ian. And um, who do you guys think was the best villain on the show? Who? The best villain on the show? I think, I, I gotta say, I think Kai, for sure. Woo! And Kai, Kai was gnarly. I mean, I used to read some of this shit he was doing. Oh. He had some great humor. He had great humor. Yeah. You know what, man? What about you? You know what? You're the OG villain, bro. I was OG. Yeah. I got to do some bad stuff. Original and Ripper. Gangster. And then Ripper Stefan. No, he turned into a softie. Uh. <sighs> remind me. I mean, don't remind me. Thank you. Great. Forget about that. Okay, but Damon never got to like play anybody else or get. You never did? Tom had a twang. Tom had a twang. I like Tom. Um, I don't, hold on. What was the question? <laughs> why didn't you play other characters? Oh, why didn't I play other what characters? Well, I did, yeah, I played Damon. Did you, would you have wanted to play something else while I like, oh. how?
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What up, girl? Hi. So first I want to say I love you both. Um, and my question is, since its departure of the show, what is something you miss about like working on the set? And just we had an amazing, 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 amazing run. Eight years ago. It was time to separate and move on and do other things. I miss our family. I miss the feeling of such a community. Um, but everything that's good has to come to an end. It's physics. What goes up must come down. Precisely. And it was an amazing run. So, I mean, I miss part people in our crew, and, you know, I miss you're the best. Thank you. But I'm just wondering, like, you guys are both, like, such, like, chill, like, nice guys. Like, is it hard to kind of play, like, those darker characters and, like, those darker scenes, I guess? No, Honestly, the yes. Human, the human mind, what you have to go through, it was so, yeah, these characters were brutal, man. Like, it was not it's just hard to, like, me. And uh, I couldn't have that much humor, and that was tough, right? Cause yeah, you had to be a pruning. Yeah, you had to at least be yourself a little bit. A psycho? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it was sometimes hard because it was just kind of brutal. Like, these guys were mean, you know what I mean? But it was a lot of fun, and it was a lot of, like, we had an amazing time. We had an amazing time. Thanks Thank for your you question. so much. Yeah, Thank, Thank you. you. It's good to see you, kiddo. You guys have been so incredible and so amazing. I mean, thank you. Oh, you guys. So, so, so much. Thank you guys.